In Blender, actions make animation modular, clean and reusable. In this video, we'll learn how, so let's cut to the core of actions in Blender 4.4. In this scene, we're working with two log objects, one intact and the other already split. The intact log is visible until frame 16, where its visibility is keyframed to turn off. Right after that, the split log becomes visible and we've got keyframed motion on its upper half to simulate it falling. Later on, we decide to reuse this animation with a different object, a pre-split tree mesh that doesn't yet have any animation. The goal is to transfer the animation from the log to the tree. In the action editor of the dope sheet, we can see the rigid body animation baked into the upper part of the log. We rename that action to falling wood. Since it affects the object's global transforms, we're able to assign it to another object. We select the relevant tree element, set its action to falling wood, and immediately the motion syncs up. Now in Blender 4.4, there's a new feature, Action Subslots, which show up automatically when animation is keyed on an object. These subslots separate different types of animation, like transforms or visibility, and they're shared across any object using the same action. We can even see that both the transform animation and visibility toggles are included in this one action. Instead of relying solely on the action editor, we can also manage everything from the animation tab in object data. From here, we can assign, switch or preview actions without needing to open the dope sheet. Next, we want to transfer just the visibility animation from the original log. That lives in a separate action, which we rename WoodViz. For clarity, we assign it to a subslot labeled Visibility Only. Back on the tree object, we assign WoodViz to that subslot via the Animation tab. Now the tree has both the motion and visibility animation we need, inherited from the original log. To complete the setup, we bring in a duplicate of the tree mesh, align it with the first, and name it Wood Intact. We assign the appropriate action and subslot the same way as before. When we play the timeline, the tree now mirrors the full animation sequence of the original log, quick and clean, without recreating anything manually. Although the tree is made of two separate meshes, we want to group their animations into a single action for easier management. We start by duplicating the falling wood action and naming it Tree Chopped. Since this action is shared by two objects, creating a dedicated version helps consolidate everything. We select both the intact and chopped tree meshes, make the intact one active, and go to Action Merge Animations. That pulls together all relevant keyframes, visibility, motion, everything, into one unified tree chopped action. To verify, we open the nonlinear animation NLA editor. We see the tree chopped action listed for the chopped tree mesh, but it's not yet pushed down as an action strip. We go ahead and do that from the action editor. Once that's done, both tree meshes have their own action strips, but they're referencing the same consolidated action. We temporarily enable the visibility of the intact tree, so both meshes are clearly visible in the scene. With everything pushed into the NLA, we can now move the entire chop sequence along the timeline. It starts at frame 16, but we can slide it anywhere we need without breaking the animation. This setup makes it way easier to handle complex sequences involving multiple elements. Everything is bundled into a clean, single action that we can manage and reposition as needed. That wraps things up for the tree asset. Next, we move on to the character to explore a few more interesting things about actions in Blender 4.4. In this part of the scene, we're working with several duplicate versions of a character, each performing a different action within roughly the same frame range. Now we want to consolidate these animations onto a single character for easier management. To begin, we push down each action in the NLA editor and give them clear names. With all the actions properly labeled, we can now assign them as separate tracks to a single character rig.
At this point, nothing appears to be playing. This is due to how the NLA editor prioritizes tracks. By default, the topmost action strip overrides those below it, and the extrapolation mode is set to hold, which means each strip will persist its animation regardless of where it's placed on the timeline. To fix this, we change the extrapolation setting from hold to hold forward. This makes each strip trigger only when it hits its active frame range. As we adjust the settings for each strip, the character begins to animate as expected, with all the actions playing in sequence. Now, rather than leaving all these actions as individual strips, we can merge them into a single action with subslots for better control. In the action editor, we select our cut animation and rename it to something like character. We then select all the other rigs, making sure the final selection is the rig we want to use. With that rig active, we go to action and merge animations. This pulls all relevant animations into one unified action that now includes multiple subslots. As we browse through the subslots, we can see each action, idle, cut, sheath, walk, neatly organized. Assigning a subslot from the action clip panel immediately switches the animation. This structure makes it easy to duplicate strips and assign specific actions directly from the same action clip. With everything in place, we can arrange the sequence, idle, cut, sheath, walk. Using the blend in and blend out sliders, we ensure smooth transitions between actions, eliminating any abrupt or jerky motion. Another benefit of using subslots is how easily we can reorder the animation. Instead of rearranging strips in the NLA, we just change the assigned subslot per strip. It's faster and more flexible. If we ever need to work directly with raw keyframes, say for detailed adjustments, we can select all action strips, enter pose mode, and use bake action. This generates a single baked sequence with all keyframes accessible in the dope sheet or action editor. Still, we're not locked into either workflow. We can add refinements while maintaining the modular nature of action strips. For instance, we could animate a head turn on top of everything else, then push that into its own action strip. By setting the extrapolation to nothing, the head turn will only be active during the strip's duration. Need it to last longer, just increase the playback scale value to stretch out the animation, reduce it to shorten the timing. Let's say we want to include this head turn into our main character action. Since actions in Blender 4.4 support different types of animation data across objects, we can assign the head turn action to another object, like a cube. And then merge it back into the original rig's action. After doing this, the head turn shows up as a new subslot in our character action. Everything stays organized, editable and efficient. Blender 4.4's action subslots and updated NLA system keeps things modular, readable and easy to tweak. Without the mess of managing countless separate actions, 